Hey YouTube, the Rock Karimov here. Today was my first full week back from vacation. Okay, we just did our first full week. And happy Passover and happy Easter to those of you at home. And I had a couple, we spoke a lot with a couple of business owners this week. Okay, I'm very pleased with the way the outcome came out. Okay, um, however, this is the trials and tribulations that we talk about on this series. So we're going to go through a couple situations where I spoke with business owners. You know, we had, we had one, one person who couldn't get the funding because of, a, because of a Jewish holiday. And then we had the lender was closed on the Jewish holiday. And then uh, we had a person that just wanted to negotiate to, with me to the, such an extreme extent that it's just not possible. And then what else did we have? We had that. Oh, yeah, we had, we had those people being considered non-essential businesses, which I have a beef with that. Because I think that that was actually an essential business, but I'm not the I, I don't set those rules. I'm not the CDC or anything like that. All right, uh, so we're gonna get into it. We're gonna go through all these situations and find out how you can avoid these trials and tribulations. Because after all, this is the Merchant Cash Advance Daily Recap. What do you guys think? You guys think you guys think I should change the title of the series to the J Becoming a Merchant Cash Advance Broker, the Journey of Becoming a Merchant Cash Advance Broker, instead of being in a, instead of the Merchant Cash Advance Broker Daily Recap. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of about that. This business owner that was waiting hours uh, for his funding and we couldn't really get it out to them. I, don't, I wasn't sure why. I, don't, I didn't know what the delay was. But after a few hours, I find out from the lender that there was actually a Jewish holiday that was taking place. So actually the entire office was out. So that pretty much put an uh, imp impediment on our funding because there was no one to actually give him the funding uh, call. So... That, that really messed me up because the business owner did need the money right away and I kind of felt bad for them almost because, well, not almost, I did feel bad for them because I know that they needed the capital right away and I just, I wasn't able to get it to them because the lender was closed. There was nothing I could do. Um, you know, I, ever since I've been in this industry, those Jewish holidays have been kind of an obstacle to work around of work around only because on those days, you know, a high volume of lenders aren't really funding. A lot of our lenders are Jewish, so they're, they're celebrating the holiday. We couldn't, we couldn't fund that day. All good. We have Monday to get it done. How do you avoid that situation, though? Just simply, you know, keeping those lines of communication open and getting everything in as soon as possible. If you guys remember in my, in my last video, I talked about how we were waiting on credit card statements. This is the same person, by the way. We're waiting on credit card statements. So the sooner we got that, maybe there was a chance that this wouldn't have gotten delayed this far. Uh, you know, get your documents in and keep those lines of communication open with whoever you're working with. It doesn't have to be me. Uh, you know, just make sure that you're communicating exactly what you're trying to do. And I, I spoke to this business owner, you know, he, he, he's kind of a sweetheart to me. And I told him, you know, this is, this, this is what's happening. There's a Jewish holiday. The lender's closed. We're not going to be able to fund today. No problem. You know, well, let's just get it done ASAP because we need it ASAP. So that's how you avoid that situation. We had a business owner that wanted to negotiate with me, haggle, whatever you want to call it. They wanted to get a better deal. They want to make sure they're getting the best deal for me, the absolute best deal for me. And look, I'll do whatever you need, but I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get it done, but this was pretty crazy. So if you guys are not familiar with the lending industry, the way it works is usually there's a, a rate that's paid back uh, or the, the total repayment cost of the funds. For example, in one of my videos, I said, usually you're looking at a 10, like for example, 100,000, you're paying back 150,000, 140,000, something somewhere in that range. Uh, somewhere in that range, if you're not that qualified, if you're the least qualified candidate, you're probably gonna be looking at payback amounts on the high end of the spectrum, right? But there's also something called a term, which a term is the amount of time that you have to pay back the cost of the funds. So, for example, the term could be a couple months, could be a year, whatever. So this business owner, they had their term set, right? That, that was the max approval that they had. And look, guess what they asked me for? They asked me for double the term. They wanted twice as long to pay back the cost of the funds. And, and usually, you know, you know, why would that be an issue? That's just, you know, that they're, they're trying to, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they really can't afford those payments and really they do need to stretch out the term by double the amount so they have 
twice as long to pay back the cost of the funds. You know, in this situation, this business owner had a bunch of positions already. They had a bunch of merchant cash advances out, okay? Meaning they have like $800 getting deducted from their checking account every single day, okay? And then they want us to add on a fourth position or, you know, they already have three positions out. This business owner wanted twice the amount of the term that they wanted to pay back. So instead of, let's say, three months, they wanted six months to pay it back. The problem with this is these approvals are coming from the top underwriting teams in the country. So these underwriters, they make sure that you can handle the payments. Okay. That's number one. And number two, if it's coming from the top underwriting teams in the country, you know, maybe this is, maybe this is what you can get, you know, and I'm all about, you know, um, you know, and I know some people really, really like to negotiate. I'm totally fine with that, but. At a, at a certain point, you, you can't you can't expect for double the term, you know. I mean, I just don't know. I I, I don't know exactly how to tell us how to explain it. It's like it's like you're going to uh, no, there's no there's no example that can even fit in here. It's just you can't you can't get double the term if 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 you're getting approved for something. Usually, the person that's giving it to you knows what they're talking about and makes sure that this is the best of what you could get. Okay. I've said this before, I'm not making these numbers up. This is coming from the top underwriting teams in the country. So how do you avoid this? Making it clear from the beginning, you know, what is the use of funds? And also, you got the use of funds and be clear about what your product is, right? Be clear about what, you're, what you can actually get them, uh, what, what the person can expect, what the business owner can expect. I try to make that very upfront from the first phone call. So... You know, some will, some won't. So what? Next. And lastly, we had the business owner that was considered a non-essential business. My only dis disagreement with this is that, okay, I get it. Essential businesses are the only ones that are open right now. In fact, I'm sure m m many of you are working from home now. Uh, many of you that are in the same field as me. But this business owner is actually a restaurant. So, you know, if they're a restaurant, some people depend on them to get food every day, right? And it's not like this business owner is closed or is just a new business, you know. They've been in business for well over 20 years, you know. And it's not just on, it's not just the being about a restaurant. It's about this is your family, I guess, in this sort of way. If you if you've had that business for that long, pretty much your customers, you know, you're pretty much treating them like family or you have a lot of repeat customers, people that basically depend on you, you know, to stay open. And if the guy can't get the funding that he needs to, you know, make some improvements into his business or stay open, you know, if they could use some working capital, whatever, then I don't, I don't want to see that person go out of business, but you know, we're trying to get them the funding. I'm, 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 I'm pushing hard against these lenders. Like, yo, th like this is an essential business. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they, they their numbers are great. You know, th this is a great file. It's a great deal in my opinion. That I think anyone that's not lending it to this is missing out. So how do you avoid this situation? I guess you can't, right? Who, who would have seen this coming? Who would have seen 75% or whatever of Americans, you know, shut down? Um, you know, we, we, we wouldn't really see this happen. But, but again, just keeping the communication open with your lending partners. As an example, if you have a great relationship with a banker and all of a sudden this crisis comes about and... You have your banker, you have that banker's number that already knows your file and that could surely help you out because they already know what your situation is. Saves a lot of time. Talk to someone that you know and that you know is experienced and that you know that could, you, you could trust them to tell you, can I get qualified? What are my options here? I need this money to survive. Whatever the situation is, whatever you're looking for, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to, you know, tell you how to run your business. I'm just saying whatever, whatever it is, just, just keep in mind lending industry, lending restrictions might be a little bit tight, tighter than usual right now. All right, that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. A lot of you have been reaching out to me, asking me questions, which I appreciate. I love. Thank you guys so much. Keep them coming. And just remember that the best way to get a hold of me or get in contact with me is either through the comment section on this video or you could send me a tweet or you could send me a text. My phone number is in the description. 
right next to the link where you can get two free stocks from Webull up to $1,600 value when you deposit $100. And it's also next to that link where you could join and become a Merchant Cash Advance broker for less than a cup of coffee a day with Richie Lending using my promo code D-A-V-R-O-N. All right, I'm gonna head out of here. It was a great week. Love talking to you guys. Make sure you subscribe to the number one Merchant Cash Advance channel here on YouTube and smash that like button because those likes help me determine whether you guys like this type of content, whether you guys want to see me make more of it. So it really helps me out a lot. All right, I'm out. Talk to you soon. Peace.